Yeah, I come from a musical family. I guess I'm a third generation as far as I know. I don't, my grandmother on my mom's side, my grandmother's older brother was the bass, one of the first bass players for the original Preservation oh, Hall band. Nice. Yeah, Joseph Butler, and we was with the LJ Stompers. And uh, my grandmother, his sister, she's still alive, she's 96. It was interesting because he was the oldest and she was the youngest. And he was like 25 years older than her. But she's 96 now and he's been gone for a while. But And I actually never met my uncle, my great uncle, but there's videos of him playing all over the world with Preservation Hall. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. And with Duke Ellington and all kind of people. What's his name? A Joseph Butler. Yeah, he had the nickname of Kid Twat. I don't know. I don't know why I'm still away from that. But, uh, <laughs> Understandable. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so that's that generation. What about your parents? My parents, of my my mom, uh, she was sort of an amateur kind of pianist, and she taught me piano when I was six, and taught my brothers and stuff. Uh, they're both the oldest of twelve, the second oldest of twelve. Both of them, my parents. My also, my grand, my grandfathers, both grandfathers were, one was an amateur banjo and a guitar player from Algiers, and he was he used to sit in and play with a lot of the famous uh, Al New Orleans musicians from Algiers, like uh, Henry Red Allen and a lot of those guys, uh, and, and uh, Kid Thomas Valentine, the great trumpet players. Uh, my other grandfather is from Homer, Louisiana, about an hour away out in the country, and he was a traveling gospel singer at a group called uh, the Gospel Voices. And um, the group broke up way before I was born, but but uh, my grandfather, he still sang in church and stuff. When I get, I, I became an organist when I was about maybe around eight years old, eight, nine years old. You church. were a church organist when you were eight years old? I was filling in, and they yeah. put me on payroll by 12. But uh, yeah, I used to play at the other time and with your, my, my brothers. And, and my your mother taught you how to play. She taught me the beginning, then I just took it from there. Yeah. You were busy was, as a kid. I was busy, yes indeed. And they said TV was bad for you, but I learned a whole lot of the New Orleans repertoire from watching Looney Tunes and uh, Three Stooges and all those old movies and stuff. Because they have so many New Orleans songs in them? They really do, they uh, do. really do. Like uh, Buzz Bunny and all that. Baby, baby. We've got the sweet and little, and it, yeah, it's perfect for New Orleans. You put the trombone slide in that song. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's one too, thing, too. Uh, very unique to New Orleans. Uh, the, the, the trombone players all over the world, but very unique to New Orleans in jazz is called the tailgate style of trombone. It's very unique to New Orleans. Now, where that comes from is Back in the old days, where before television, uh, businesses would advertise their businesses on the sides of those wagons and stuff. And to bring attention to the signs on the wagons, they would hire brass bands to play on the wagons. And with the trombone player having a slide, you know, he might knock the bass player out or something. So he had to, they had to open the tailgate of the wagon, and the trombone player would sit down on the wagon. And they, they call that style the tailgate style. And basically, it's like, say a song, or when the same. That's the melody line with the lead part, which is usually played by the trumpet. Right. So that's playing it straight. That's playing it straight. Right. The trombone part is to fill in in between the melody line. So when the say, or when the say, Yeah, so, so do you think the trombonist did it first? 
Do we know? Does anyone know? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows for sure. Right. But that's the kind of the personality of that. the trombone yeah. kind of took. And also, there's another name for that as well. Uh, there's tailgate style trombone, and there's also gut bucket, which kind of has a whole lot of the growls, the nitty gritty. <clears throat> you can play one thing, play it straight, but if you growl it, bah, it's like a knockout punch. All right, well, do, do, do something, right, so do it. Do the gut bucket thing the same way you did that. Yes. You might want to do a blues or whatever's going to work best for gut bucket. Well, yeah, there's, there's a great song. Uh, my book has got a hole in it. Oh, that's a great song. Yeah, it's a great song. That's not a New Orleans song, is it? So I kind of. I think it might, it might have started maybe in the Mississippi Delta or somewhere, yeah, yeah. but you know, we'll take it and make it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it yeah, yeah. We're, we're taking and make it out for sure, you know. So with the gut bucket, you don't need a, a plunger or something, but it, it really goes with it. So this, this song. And that's a regular plumber's like plunger, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they make them out of like gold and brass and everything, yes. but originally it was just from like you popped it off the, you know. Take the stick the off, you good. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the truth. Uh, I, I get this question asked a lot because New Orleans musicians, we still use yeah, right, right. trumpets and trombone players. Uh, a lot all over the world, New York especially, they got all kind of little gimmicks and contractions that, that sound the same. Yeah. And I, talk, I tell people, I say, well, you can go pay $90 for something at a music store. You can go to Walgreens, you know, $1.88. <laughs> you know, if it drops, whoops, still good. You know? <laughs> That's what, as long as you got for breeze, we can't go. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, that note is really perfect for um, gut bucket tailgate. Right. So this is my bucket's got a hole in it. Just New Orleans style. 
they a lot of times in the, a lot of colleges they frown upon New Orleans style. And uh, I finished college of myself. I went through uh, uh, three different universities, and um, but they were all, all of them were in New Orleans, right. so they understood. But it's still they're looking for kind of the new the New York jazz kind of set the tone for a lot of people, right. which is a lot of it's very <laughs> it's not really dance music. Right. A lot of New York jazz it's, it's really good, really good, but it's kind of it's cerebral. You want to. Oh, you want to nice. sit in the club and do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Whereas New Orleans make you get ah, oh, I know. Well, please do go. Oh, yeah. Where well, there's never no ice or snow. Why don't you go? Yeah, now. The time to do what I need. You know, all night long. That's how you do that, you know. So, um. All right, so hold up. Let's go back. So, no, that's great. No, no, I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, yeah. I just want to, like, go back to the development part. Yeah, the development. No, no, in part because it's New Orleans, right? And a lot of people, once they get, you know, their early learning, they play in a high school marching band, right? Yes. And yes. then, you know, they play in brass bands on the street. So, yes. you know, so do you play in a high school marching band? I did. I actually started in uh, third grade in elementary band. And uh, You guys had a marching band in grade school? We, we, we would only do one parade a year, for, oh. but we, we, it was more of a concert band. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, um, but all of that's important too to the development. Um, yeah, so yeah, I started in third grade on, on the West Bank, McDonald 32. Um, and yeah, I was on trumpet then, actually. My older brothers asked me when I was a kid what, what I wanted to play, and I told them trombone, and they gave me a trumpet. So I just. Played the trumpet like the trombone, uh, just the bottom for a lot of years till they let, let me learn them. I was able to learn the trombone myself, but I learned a lot of different instruments: trumpet, trombone, tuba, eventually, and all that good stuff. And, and so, uh, in high school, what you played trombone in high school? I started when I was I started uh, in ninth grade. I was I learned tr trombone. I was playing trombone with jazz, but nobody in my school knew that I was a trombone and I was still a trumpet player. Uh -huh. So we went to, there's a great music school at, entitled St. Augustine's Marching 100 Band. Great band, my older brother was in it as well. He's a trombone player too. St. Augustine's 100, right? Yeah, yeah. Marching 100. What's, what's the name, what's the mascot name? Oh, the Purple Knights. The Purple Knights. Yeah, Purple and Gold. Purple Knights, sea sick, water bottle, can't swim about the job, Purple Knights. That was fight songs and all that stuff. <laughs> so by the way, when Mardi Gras happens, which you will, and you know, I mean, assuming it will, mm -hmm. um, and assuming you guys will uh, all be out at Mardi Gras parades, the, the Mardi Gras parades are sustained by all the high school marching bands who play, yes. and St. Ogg's is like the most appreciated and celebrated them. First of all, there's a hundred of them. Yeah, Second awesome. of all, they are striking looking because they're in purple and gold with helmets, yes. and you know, they're louder than anybody else, and they're great. And yeah, so, really, you know, really then you'll know that, you know, you know that Ron L was one of them all the yeah. time. So you were the Purple Knights and then was that? Yeah, um, then I started the band, went to summer band camp as a freshman on trumpet. And just to tell you how St. all rolls, because I was in a few other bands, middle school and all that, LB Land and some other bands. A lot of bands, they'll have their music, which consisted of marches and some of the school songs and the popular songs they play on the radio that the bands will play. Um, a lot of school bands, they would, the band director would have, okay, we have the number of songs that we worked on that we have good enough to perform in public for the year. The, like some songs, the usual is kind of like 10, 10, 12 songs, a good band, 14. Then I went to say no. After the first three weeks of summer band practice and the schools began. Saying, "Oh, we had fifty-six songs that we were ready to perform." I mean, we we had it down, and that's just, just the, the, the the sort of excellence that Saint no, demanded of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what kind of song? So, uh, so what? You, when you so you must have marched in the Mardi Gras parade. Right? Oh yeah. Back. So, what kind but, of songs you play? Well, just like I switched. The trumpet section was so magnificent. And I started on trumpet uh, the day before auditions, like when we go finalize the spot. When, uh, when, well, when I showed up to auditions, instead of a trumpet, I showed up with a trombone. And I was just too intimidated by the trumpet players. We had, they were playing Earth, Wind, and Fire songs and all the Earth, you know, all kind of stuff. And those marches and just every, all kind of 
saw Anita Baker, they, they, they had it down. They said, no, they didn't have watered down arrangements. Uh, Adrian Watkins was the ranger for St. Augustine, and it was like college level. And any song that they had, um, with Whitney Houston, anybody, if they had, they put out a recording of the song, and Adrian Watkins wrote an arrangement, every bit of that song is going to be in the, this high school band's arrangement. If it's a call bell, somebody's going to have that in their parts. You know? The song at St. Aug is just like that, and you better play it. So back when, so when you were in St. Aug, on you know, Mardi Gras Praise, what kind of songs, what do you remember that you guys played on the route? Oh, man, there's a whole lot of stuff. Whitney Houston, I'm your baby tonight. Stevie Wonder, happy birthday. I remember we, we play that every year for Martin Luther King's oh, parade. Yeah, of course. Happy. I better stop. Last time I started marching to show some younger guys, I got back in my car and I, I, both of my legs locked up on this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's another demonstration of marching. Those were the days. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, 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 did, we did whole field shows, you know, for like the football games. Um, we're like, Steve and Wonder this time, we'd be on, do all of his songs. And, um, and we spelled out Stevie on the field. I remember we did that with But so in, uh, in, the in the high school marching band, there aren't really solos, right? Each section might be playing together, but no one no one really solos. Am I, am Not right really, yeah. but, but I have, uh, that, that those particular two years that I was there, we had a significant number of musicians in the band who were playing professionally already. So we, we had the the Junior Pinstripe Brass Band within the St. Augusta Marching 100. So they, what they started doing that year, they got a group of us, we started playing some of the second line tools, the brass band tools, like Do What You Want, Do What You Want. Oh, they, should, they should hear what Do What You Want sounds like. Oh, yeah. You, you need all the rest of the instruments, but it, just to get a feel of it. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we graduated together. He's the drummer. Right. Um, but their dad also taught there years ago. That was Marcellus. And it's just a fantastic school for the arts, and not just music, but uh, dance and uh, the, all, all kinds of stuff. There's even culinary arts they yeah. are added now. It's, it's a wonderful school. Yeah. So when I found out that that existed, I, like, I love saying no, but I got to go to Noka. So Noka doesn't like have a, they must have a band, but they don't have like a marching band or anything. No, they don't have a marching band. That would, that would be a good idea. It would be a good idea. Yeah. They don't have a marching band. It's kind of but more have, of individual studies, even though you play in kind of small groups. But they must have a jazz band. Yes. In the school. Yeah, they do have, uh, depending on the uh, the people, the students who come year to year, but they do, they keep a jazz band. And then they have their concert band, you can major in classical or vocal and all kinds of musical theater. Just had a little cousin graduated uh, last year in musical theater. And, um, but yeah, they, yeah. So, but they do have a jazz band. But it's kind of geared, even though this is New Orleans, it's geared toward the New York jazz, the yeah, modern, yeah, right, right. the modern jazz. It's kind of what you learn in school. You know? So, were you? Uh, so, when you were in Noka, were you already playing with your family band on the street or with yeah. other bands? Yeah, my family bands and the other bands. Uh, um, I there was the Junior Pinstripe, which was that band that we had at Saint Louis. Right. And the original Pinstripe Brass Band, I was playing with them as well. There was the Algiers Brass Band, I was been playing with them. There was uh, my family band, Coolbone. My, my older brother, who, who, was, who is Stephen Coolbone Johnson, is another trombone player. He was Coolbone, a way to his given middle name? Well, he, his he, it was his nickname, but now he has his name legally changed to <laughs> Stephen Kubal Johnson. So it's on, it's on his driver's license and everything. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, brother Steve. I'm, I'm eight years younger than him, and uh, there were two brothers before that. But so the Kubal Brass, all of these brass bands played second lines, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second lines, the jazz funerals. And if you don't, if you haven't heard, you know, we do in New Orleans. Uh, we have lively music at our funerals. And it might, it might be slow and stuff at first, it's slow and touchy, but at some point a party's gonna break up. You see everybody down the street having a good time, second line got umbrellas, drinks and all that. Great party is probably a funeral. Right, right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. There's, there's, there's a bumper sticker in town. We put the fun in funerals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you can do this, but maybe you can. Uh, can you give them an example of, like, you know, like, uh, you know, the dirge on the way, you know, jazz funeral, right? You play yeah. Closer Love With Me or whatever it is on the way, uh, and then, you know, when the body is, you know, cut loose, then you come back and play something else. Can you give an example of sort of difference? Absolutely. So, uh, when a band starts at the funeral, and uh, you're bringing up kind of the, the coffin out of the church unto, unto the hearse and all of that, the, the band and the family perform, they set up and it's called, it's considered the first line. It's the first line, the band and the family. And we're playing stuff like uh, a dirge, like just a closer walk with these. <laughs> Which is you send the 
to put the coffin in the uh, the hearse or the carriage, and then the parade forms. And this was kind of coming out of the church where the whole band was doing that. And now the parade forms. And still, once again, the band and the bereaved family forms the first line, and everybody afterwards forms the second line. So that's where that term comes from, second line parade. Because y'all y'all in the second line, and that's usually where the party people happen. So after that, we've done that part in the tears and all that. And uh, back in the day, too, I've, I've heard that, you know, when you see people with the, with the handkerchiefs, with the white handkerchiefs doing that and all that kind of stuff, it came from back in the days, they used to, before the Great Depression, I heard, they used to uh, release doves into the air, kind of like the uh, symbolizing your soul going up to heaven. They will release doves. But then when the Great Depression came, nobody could afford dogs anywhere anymore. So they take, took handkerchiefs and would wave them in the air like this. I never heard that. Yeah, that's, a, that's where from, from my uh, understanding, that's where that comes from. So that's where that, uh, yeah, so. So when the hearse goes to the cemetery, mm -hmm. does everyone follow or they get, sort of the hearse goes with the family and then everyone turns around? It depends. Some, some, uh, you know, a lot of times it's how much you, what you pay for with the band. <laughs> if you pay for a full flash funeral, we'll follow the hearse all the way to the cemetery. It's not too far. Or, you know, if it's just, you know, oh, just, oh, just pay y'all. We call it for this. Okay, we'll march y'all two or three blocks. Then let y'all go. Then let the, uh, the hearse go. And we'll, we'll, we'll stay there and make, maybe second line a little bit further and then go back to the church or something like that. But uh, that's how the second line, and then with the second line, it's usually a faster song. So once the once the hearse with the body goes, yes, right, then what? Then what happens? But sometimes, now sometimes we'll keep the hearse will stay with us, and uh, uh, we're we'll scared of horses if it's a carriage. So woo again, and the horses like oh no, 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 no. But uh, that was particularly fun for me when I was a teen, but I'm. I'm Wrong now, yes. <laughs> you know, you're not as amused by getting the horses. Yeah, the oh, yeah, that was, that was it. But, but I'm feeling much better now. <laughs> so after that part, we will pick it up. In the older days, it was usually all spirituals, so slow spirituals or faster spirituals, like a song called Law, Law, Law. <laughs> Two by two, 
Ramble here, ramble there. Ramble everywhere. And then he rambled. And he rambled. Ramble till the butcher cut him down. Well, his head was in the market. His feet were in the street. Yes, all the young ladies go passing by. So look at that market's meat. Well, then he rambled. He rambled. He rambled till the butcher cut him down. Well, okay, I'm still thinking that pig, but like you said, yeah, I got to bypass the words. You got around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he rambled all around. All <laughs> In and right. out of everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should at some point try to see a jazz fusion on the Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the whole, what's the logic, right? So the body gets loose, and then the, you cut the body loose, yes. and then everyone turns out, and you're playing upbeat music. So why, what's the logic? That, you know, now we're happy, or we're yeah. celebrating the guy's life? Yeah, yeah, it, it comes life. from the uh, African cultures of uh, back in the day when, and you, you'll still find this in some parts of Africa where if you look at a funeral in Africa, it's like a party, like a parade and party down the street. And in New Orleans, I guess uh, the African American community just carried that over and uh, is celebrating the life instead of being mournful. Of course, you, you said your loved ones are gone, but it is a celebration. Oh man, you know, they would have wanted to party themselves, you know, so yeah, it's a, it's a celebration of life. Has the Preservation Hall, this is just a question I'm thinking, have, have, have you guys ever been to Africa? Have you been to West Africa or anything? The, the, the band has before I uh, before I joined. Okay. But uh, I, I've been, I know. Have you been to, were you on the trips recently to Cuba or anywhere else? Yeah, I was on the Cuba trips and Haiti and all of that right. stuff. Right, yeah. But I've never been to Africa. Well, I, I don't think there's been a trip for a while, but. No, because I've been traveling with the band since 2010. Uh -huh. Well, 2011. Right. And uh, they haven't had any trips to Africa or Australia in that time. Yeah, well, COVID-wise, it's probably not a good time to go no, now. No. But now, no, I was just curious because yes. I know the whole, you know, the the parent culture of all this, right? Yes. The West African parades. Right, right. I didn't really know about the funerals though, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And if you ever find any footage, it yeah. looks it you know, on their funerals. It looks like ours is just without the brass band. They'll have music, like drums and stuff, maybe some guitars, but... Uh, they have handkerchiefs? They got... I haven't seen the handkerchiefs. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's just us. Yeah, they got, <laughs> they got birds? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to look this up. I think it's okay. really interesting. Cool. Um, so, all right, so you are... So we're just getting back to the chronology, as yes. sometimes I'm uh, trying to, but I don't care. <laughs> um, so, so in high school, you're no good. You're playing the snare jazz band, but you're also playing on the street in like three or four brass bands. Probably at that band. time, maybe eight or nine. Eight eight or nine. nine. All right. Yeah, well, I was playing with the older people and the younger people. Were when you the, playing with, with Dr. White's Liberty, Dr. White's band back then? Not back then. Uh, I started with with Dr. White's band probably in my college years, probably around the. Uh, uh, Probably around 94, 95, something like that. And you mentioned that you were in college where here? Oh, oh I, I started at Dillard University. Right. Uh, then I actually stopped for five, for those three years when I signed my brother signed a record deal with Hollywood Records. And then I came back and I went to Sulu for a lot of years. Then I, I, I did one semester at UNO, then I went back and finished that semester. So were you playing, so I don't know what the college, I mean, I know more about high school marching bands down here than college bands. I know a little, but were you playing in the college bands? Yeah, I was in the, uh, the music departments. Dillard and Suno's bands were kind of were kind of small at the time. They were kind of just small jazz ensembles. UNO had a pretty big production with different, several different jazz ensembles and big bands. and and all the stage bands and all that stuff. I mean, did you do like, you know, college football halftime shows and stuff like well, that? Well, none of us, those schools had oh, any okay. football teams, oh, so, okay. yeah. I was actually trying to avoid the schools that had those. I, actually, I had a whole lot of scholarships out of high school, from the Juilliard, Berkeley College of Music, uh, Howard University, a bunch of the Morehouse, LSU, and I was making so much money as a professional musician in New Orleans, I didn't want to leave. Wow. So yeah, you know, so those are great schools, but you know, I, I, 
I was making money. I, mean, I believe I was already traveling the world, took on 15, you know, going to Spain, France, Italy, uh, and those bands? With, the, with, with, with some of the brass bands. Nice. Yeah. So you have no regrets about not going to any of those? No schools. regrets. All right. No regrets at all. Um, all right, so when, when you were with, uh, when you were doing whatever, what, what you call the brass hop, with the house, oh, yeah. what kind of stuff were you playing? I mean, what would. A lot of that was well, the family band. It was original material that was kind of funky, funk uh, versions of stuff. And uh, when we, we incorporated rap to a, right. a lot of the songs, too. Um, I was the tuba player primarily for all of that. And my brothers had the horns, and my uncles and cousins on drums and Can stuff. You, do you remember any of those tunes that would translate well to just you giving us a sense of it on trombone? I'm not asking you to rap unless you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't rap. I do sing now. See, I was the baby brother, so my brothers had all that. I didn't need to be vocal at all. I just would hold down, whatever. But uh, since Hurricane Katrina, I, a lot of them singers didn't come back to town. I started singing a bit, and now I sing a lot more. Yeah, and stuff. Uh, but here's a song I wrote uh, called I you wrote, you wrote it? Yeah, I wrote this song that we uh, recorded with, uh, with Cool Bone. And, and it's called? It's called I Ain't Got Nothing. Because right. when I played it for my brother, um, my brother Cool Bone, he was like, hey man, what's the name of the song? I said, oh, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, I ain't got nothing. He just kept it like that. Got lyrics and all that, but uh, um, so it doesn't got, have that. lyrics? It does, okay. but I don't. I don't know. Uh, right, you're on guy with something. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. All right. So then it was kind of funky. <laughs> it was all uh, the melody goes like this. <laughs> Then they also hired us to be their horn section too. 
I was on tuba, tuba with that with me and my brothers. So that worked out so well that we, we went on tour with them as well after that and stuff. So we, you know, we, we were doing good, some good stuff. But uh, yeah, we were doing a lot of good stuff. We put out a couple of music videos and all of that. And so that, that, that's like the mid '90s or late '90s, right? That was the mid, mid to late '90s. Right, yes. right, right. So and after a while, everything was going good, but then. We're jazz musicians, we're not really hip hoppers like that. <laughs> so we was like, you know what, let's just kind of go back to what our roots is. And, you know, we're all happier and stuff. Because touring, I've been doing this since I was 15, touring is wonderful, but it gets old. You know, it, it gets really old, you know, especially if you're going two or three months at a time. We were, there were times when we would only see New Orleans when it was part of the tour. Yeah, when no. you say it gets old, you mean it was like boring, it was tiring, it was... Exhausting. <laughs> it's great stuff, you know, you see things that you probably wouldn't have seen, especially the European tours, right. and, you know, you're eating sometimes with kings and queens, the palaces and all that. But after so many years, I was like, man, we got to go out again for, you know, two, three months straight, you know, six nights a week and stuff, it, it gets old. But it's great when it gets old. <laughs> So what? So you come back to New Orleans, right? What's yeah. uh, what happens next? What's your next phase? Because you don't know, join Preservation Hall in 2010, right? So you said right, right. Uh, I actually I, I started playing at Preservation Hall uh -huh. in the Palm Court in 2003, I believe, but I wasn't traveling with them. But uh, I was still playing with a lot of brass bands. Oh, forgot to mention my gospel career. I, I was out there. Yeah, I was a church artist on payroll since I was 12. So all of this time I'm playing with all the brass bands as a young star was playing at church on Sundays, Wednesdays, choir rehearsals, Thursday nights. Sometimes I play at other different churches as an organist. So were you working seven days a week as a musician, pretty much? Pretty much. Since 12, yes. <laughs> so I didn't want to interrupt, talk more about oh. your gospel career. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was doing all of that and uh it's really tough to do that at school. <laughs> but I was a 4.0 student, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't easy all the time. Like, okay, I got a, uh, I'm in school all day, say like a Wednesday. I'm in school all day, then I got band practice, we're saying, oh, uh, you know, five to seven or so. Then I got to leave straight from there to go play at the organ at church that night till like about nine, nine or so, 9.30. Then I got a gig with a brass band at 10. You know, and down was on, on, on the French Quarter and somewhat, and we might not be finished till midnight. Then I gotta come home and do calculus homework, or, you know, the, all that kind of stuff. This was a regular thing for me. And my brothers went through the same thing when they were uh, my age as well, you know. And, then, and it continued in college, you know. And, and in college, now I'm, I'm traveling overseas, so I'm like, I'm, you know, I got a, got a week on a Christmas break that I'm in Spain. I gotta come back and hurry up and do this term paper before you know all, all kind of that stuff, you know. But so, that's fun. So in, in your gospel, you're mostly playing piano or organ in gospel. Yeah, right? mostly piano and organ, but also trombone. Never the drums or anything like that. Yeah, it was the drummer too for a lot of times. <laughs> so um so what what are the regular tunes of gospel? Because you're playing, I assume you're playing fairly straight. Maybe a little funky, but fairly straight. You're not are you doing tailgate and Gut bucket in the on, church, on the, on the horn? In gospel, I mean, in gospel music? All of that. Yes, <laughs> yes all of that. Well, in New Orleans, yeah, right, it's right. kind of the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is interesting, me and my brothers would sometimes, we would go on tour and say that we'd be off on a Sunday. Say, I remember this happened at one, one particular time in Denver. Me and my brothers and my cousin, we just happened to be off on a Sunday in Denver. And we're like, hey. I feel like going to church and playing their music. So yeah, so we just picked the church. Oh, all right, we went to Father Baptist Church with our brother horns in. We from New Orleans. Oh, y'all come in and we just cut up. <laughs> just cut up, got with their musicians and all that. It, it, that happened several times. So, um, you know, I don't know how familiar with classes with gospel tunes, but um, play, you know, play one of the, you know, more well-known gospel tunes at any way you play in church. Okay, let's see. I don't even know what song when the music starts like that. <laughs> It'll come to you. It'll come to you, it's coming. Uh, oh, here's a good old one. I'm a, I'm a soldier in the army of the law. 
really simple, but we could cut up. Oh, that's my wife, Rachel, by the way. She's a musician as well. She's a piano player, classical, and now bass drummer. But me, I actually bass learned. Bass drummer like on the street bass drummer? Yeah, yeah. Well, she's a classical pianist, but one day I did a little experiment. I said, hey, baby, come, come by this bass drum. Just see if you can do this beat. Oh, I might have some. Now try this beat. She did that too. So now she's in the band too. She's making all that money. Yeah, uh, wow, that's got, great. Oh, yeah, we got a gig tomorrow night with the family band. Yeah, go ahead, baby. Look at her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's an old tradition of you know women women bass drummers on the street. I mean, yeah. not as common, but not as common. Way back. Yeah, this is true. This yeah, is true. Great. Yes, indeed. So she's enjoying the race. So she right, she so, will be gigging without me when I'll be out of town sometimes. Like, go ahead, man. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I, her, her uncle, years before we met, her uncle was the organist at the church when I, where I was coming up. So he taught me a lot of the church organ. Yeah. And her son is a trombone I mean, his son, his uncle's son, her cousin, is a trombone player. So we've been playing together for years. Right. And, uh, we would meet up at like, we, we call them musicals in New Orleans, but really just kind of gospel choir, concerts and stuff. We would meet up, me and her cousin, uh, at a lot of different church musicals. We both have our trombones, and this is one they like us to like us to do. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. <laughs> Dallas. So I stayed out there for a year. 
You play music while you're there? Oh, yeah. That's all, that's all the kind of work I know, right, playing right. music. So When you came back, was your house damaged? You didn't have a lot of... No, um, we uh, most of our family was on the West Bank, oh, so right, right, right. we had wind damage, but no flood. Okay, yeah. Yeah, most of it was uh, uh, wind damage and no flooding, but the city as a whole just wasn't ready to be lived yeah. back, you know. So we just kind of made, made, made our home in Dallas for a while. I stayed there for a year. My parents stayed there for about two or three years, and my brothers, I got one, my oldest brother is still out there. He loved it, and a few uncles. My brother Coolbone, he saw what happened when he went to Huntsville, Alabama for, by his in-laws. So he got him, a, he was a music teacher as well. Uh, he got him a job when Katrina happened like Saturday or something, he got him a job like Wednesday as a band director in Huntsville, Alabama. All right, so I don't want to interrupt you, but I want to give students to a ch chance to ask you questions. Sure. So I'm going to throw the lights on and sure. start a Q&A and have, feel free to ask the very shy Mr. Johnson any questions <laughs> that you want. What's going on? How y'all doing? <laughs> any questions, people? Yo. Um, have you ever played a P-bone? Oh, yeah, I got three of them. <laughs> and, and a P-trumpet, yeah. Yeah, I love them. The, the, the P-bones are plastic trombones. And uh, they, they make a whole thing of different instruments that are plastic, made of plastic now. They're really in, pretty impressive. I've done recordings with them and all that. Does the it sound way. different? It's pretty much the same. Wow. It's, it's a little different, uh, but it's nice. It's nice. And uh, it was perfect because uh, when I joined the Preservation Hall Band touring with them in 2010, well, 2011, I was on a tuba, but I learned from years of traveling with with cool ball on the tuba. I'm a trombone player, my main instrument. I need to keep my chops up. But I did that with cool ball. We were gone for like a year, and I wasn't re really playing trombone. Then I had a 30 minute brass band gig when I came back to New Orleans. I could barely play. I'm like, oh man, so I, I, I said I'll never let that happen again. So when I started playing the tuba with the brass hall band. I got a P-bone, and wherever the tuba went, I had my P-bone with me. So every chance I get, I would be playing and stuff, and little little recording sessions would pop up and this and that. And so when you use the term chops, do you mean in terms of you know make sure that you're rehearsing and practiced, or do you mean your actual my, my actual lips? Yeah. Yeah, the lip muscles. Uh, there's an armature, this little area up in here. Armature and on top of the armature is the aperture. And all of that's very important when you start developing music to play as a uh, as a career. And you don't want to let those like atrophy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to let it die cut, die out. And it's, it's different for playing tuba. Tuba doesn't keep up the same muscles or not the same muscles. Uh -huh. it, it, uh, Cause I, I I started as a trumpet player years ago. Then that, when I picked up the trombone and tuba, I let the trumpet go for a lot of years. Then when I wanted to play trumpet again, all that was gone. And I, it took me about four, three or four years to get back where I could play trumpet again. So I don't definitely don't want that to happen with the trombone or, or anything. So I was always curious about the term chops because yeah, exactly. you know even guitarists use it. They don't. They don't mean that. Right. Right. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah, it could be uh, for all of that. But yeah, that's that's. Chops, gotta keep the chops. Up. All right. Questions? On What's like the little silver thingy? Like the little lever thing? Like this? No, like the thing, like the looks like a lever. Oh, oh, yeah, this. That thing. Okay, yeah. This. Uh, a lot of trombones don't have this, but what it is is we use for a couple of different things. It's used for alternative notes, like some notes. If I don't want to go way out there, I can just hit it here, like. Different like stuff like that, and for hitting lower notes, the end of the, the lowest register of the trombone is usually supposed to be about this note. It's not really supposed to go too much lower than that, but with the lever. Extend the register of the horn. You can do little tricks. 
you know, the trumpet players can go to wiggling their fingers. Yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> yeah, you know, so you know, I can do that too. Another little trick the trumpet players do, they, they come do a half bell, where they'll go press the bells down all the way, they put it halfway, and, makes it, and I'm able to do it with just a half trigger, and make it sound like this. You're just having fun with it, you know. So is the lever just called the lever? Does it have a... The formal name is the F attachment. The F attachment? Yeah. Right. But now some horns have more than one. The, the, the symphony horn, but well, just to let you know, to, the, uh, to these instruments take a lot of air, and the bigger the horn, the more tubing, the more air it takes. Jazz players don't usually like all that, so you see a lot of the modern jazz players, they have really little trombones with none of these. The symphony players, they're not blowing parades in the streets, so they don't mind. they're just sitting there, so they don't mind using a lot of air. So the symphony players, they'll have some horns with three, four, I've seen as many as six triggers, where there's a whole lot of extra tools and big horns. I don't recommend it, but uh, I've seen them. Yes, indeed. That's a great question. What else yeah. do you want to ask? Joe's good. Yeah, do you do like anything in particular for breath control? For breath, breath control? Nothing in particular. Um, I remember in high school, their theory was to, to build your breath control and endurance. They would make us run laps around the school. <laughs> See, I was always out of breath when they made us run laps around the school. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, I See the logic of that. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, run around the school. I, I, I used to be in the blood. I'm <laughs> you know, See, but that, that's, that's what they say. So there's no, you don't do breathing exercises either with or without the instrument? I don't know. I, I know some people do. My uncle, he's one of those screamers, trying to play, and that takes a lot of breath. He actually used to take like the the inside of that roll, the little cardboard inside of a roll of a paper towel, and he would and do little breathing exercises like that. He said that increased his breath. I tried it. Made me dizzy, so I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works for you, I guess. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, other questions. There was another hand over in the back. No, anyone? Jazz, New Orleans, Ronald Johnson's personal story? You got a question? What does it take for you to do circular breathing? Circular, see why you gonna bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> Circular breathing, excuse me. A nice little trick where Kenny G used to do it a lot, uh, where you kind of continuously play a note. Now I can do it, I never do it smoothly. My brother he used to be able to do it, he'd be watching his, his watch while he's doing it. But uh, what do you do? The trick is to. This is for holding a note. Yeah, for holding a note, the, the, that sound and still being able to breathe. The trick is to, while you're playing, notice I don't, I don't normally pump my cheeks out and then say that's improper uh, playing, but for a circular breathing, you wanna do that. At least that's one technique. Pump it for your uh, cheeks full of air, and then when you're ready to take a breath, you, you, push the air out of your cheeks into the horn as you sneak a breath in in your nose. So kind of like. Ah, I haven't done it in a while. But. Trombone Sean, he, he's got it worked out. He, I've seen him do it for a good six, seven minutes on stage, just rolling. I've also seen the way he's messed up and then quickly corrected it. You know, see, it's all it's all performance. You know, but yeah, when Marcellus recorded a classical piece during his years ago, where he circular bred the whole song. It was a recording, I think. It was 
it was maybe a good 10 minute song or something. You just wow. circle around, playing every note. What would have been the perfect articulate Yeah, incredible. Not breaking for Not breaking. Yeah, incredible. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that humorous note, big hand for Ron L. Johnson. Thank you. Uh, anybody has specific questions, please come up and ask. Um, uh, before anybody leaves, can I get a picture? I was told by Ashley Graham. Yeah. I need to get a picture of you, so can you walk in front of the students and I'll get one of you Certainly. with them? I'm going to do a hat on what that is. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to sit down. So you to <laughs> bring your camp. Well, you can get in the picture, but also bring the camp. Oh, yeah, I want to. Uh, I want to have as many possibly good pictures as possible.